or a pH buffer? Even if you calculated beforehand how much of the acid and base to mix using that Henderson Hasselbalch equation to get you to that perfect pH, you're still going to want to check the pH and adjust it as needed using a strong acid or a strong base. And you're going to want to check it at the temperature that you're going to be using it at because the temperature can actually affect the pH. Some buffers are more notorious for this. The most notorious is TRIS. Basically, for every decrease in a degree Celsius that you go with your TRIS buffer, you're going to get an increase of about 0.03 in your pH. This means that if you were to prepare your buffer to be a nice 8.0 at your room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, and then you go and you use it when you're purifying a protein at 4 degrees Celsius because your proteins like the cold, well, now your buffer is actually going to be at like 8.58. Um, which means that there's going to be a lot fewer protons around. So you can kind of think of this as this way. It's easier to remember that as you increase the temperature, you're going to make it more acidic. You're going to decrease the pKa, make it easier for those protons to pop off of the tris. Tris has a high like ionization enthalpy. Basically, when you adding heat is adding energy. You're adding energy to those protons and this makes it easier for them to pop off. Because this ionization enthalpy is high, what this means is that for a tris, it takes a lot of energy to actually pop that proton, proton off. And because this energy component, this bond energy, this enthalpy component is so important for tris, it's gonna have this temperature dependence that you're not gonna see as much with other buffers. But for TRIS, you're going to have this issue, and so you want to be really, really careful with TRIS, especially but with any buffer, that you always check the pH at the temperature that you're going to use it at and adjust it as needed. Typically, what you're doing is you're adjusting it with something like one molar hydrochloric acid or um, one molar NaOH or KOH. You don't want to really mix salt, so if you're using like a sodium in your buffer, then you would use NaOH, and if you're using potassium in your buffer, um, then you would use KOH. And say if you were making um, a phosphate buffer, you would use like phosphoric acid if you needed an acid. If you were using an acetic acid buffer, you'd use like acetic acid, um, and so those sorts of things. But typically, what you're doing is you're just adding like HCl or NaOH um, because you're typically often using like um, sodium chloride in your buffer anyway. So that's basics of remembering to pH your buffer and do it at the temperature you want it at um, because that temperature can affect things. As you go down in your temperature, you're going to go up in your pH. You're going to make things more basic, fewer protons around, which might have an impact, might not, but it's better safe than sorry, right?